This is how it feels watching most influencers today talking about the Middle East. Which category do I fall into? A detonation has just occurred on the outer ring of the city. We'll now be going live to our top influencer opinions. OMG, so people, the world is ending. Are you seeing this? This is actually so exciting. Yo, I know it's chaos, but you got real survivor's wife energy. That's cool. I like them feisty. Like. It would totally be better if we ran it, you know? Men literally destroy everything and my girls need to stop being so soft with these basic losers. Who even needs men, right? Anything a man builds just gets destroyed by a different man. <laughs> Guys, this collapse is literally the perfect dip. I'm buying more right now. Nukes are Sue's aesthetic today. I made this outfit. <laughs> Even as the world burns, my struggle for visibility and acceptance continues. This is exactly why representation matters now more than ever. As I keep saying on the channel, the world collapses when men stop lifting. It's not politics, it's testosterone. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Balloon time. So yummy. Nuclear boom. So tasty. Thank you. <laughs> AI is watching humans and is probably laughing his toothache off. I mean, if you can really laugh. But <laughs> how good did he capture the whole archetype of different influencers and the way that we're looking today at world media and catastrophes that are happening around the world? To many people around the West, this have became like a show. Literally a show. You know, they'll come home, they'll grab their smoothie, they'll make their coffee, they'll sit, and let's see what tragedy is befalling planet Earth, and let's follow which influencer is going to tell it in the most exciting way, which, you know, it is what it is. At least people get to know what's happening around the world. I'm not saying that people should sit with, like, you know, potato sack bags on their heads and just cry over the TV, but it's kind of funny how he captured the different types of influencers and how they like to tell things. And this is how it feels to me as someone who grew up in the Middle East as an Arab uh, from Israel, someone who served in the army and actually studied, you know, politics and history. When I see many influencers out there talking about what's happening around the world, when I see someone that like John Christensen, I don't know, you know, this armpit hair, uh, baby face kid, it's like they have no clue. And for them, it's just a game with zero consequences, zero accountability, and just a way to go and become viral, and they will jump on any trend possible. It's amusing, and but hey, I mean, I might be falling into that as well, because I'm also now giving my uh, five shekel about what's happening around the world on social media, and also trying to make it in the most user-friendly, interesting, captivating way, so that people can actually listen and understand and see what's happening, because if you start talking in a boring way, no one is gonna listen, so maybe I am part of this, Probably I am part of this, but anyway, this is just, wow. I mean, AI have reached a whole new level. <laughs> Someone told me that I'll probably be this guy and the guy after. Nothing stops the daily grind. Not even a little natural disaster. Friends, this is the breakthrough moment from chapter seven. When everything falls apart, we rebuild ourselves stronger. My girl, you wouldn't believe what just happened. Definitely not this guy. Hi! OMG, I just totally shit my pants after that noise. Chat, chat, this is literally the most real. Half of my childhood game ever, friends are still this so guy. I buy a boat DLC before I actually drown. So this company says their device is quote unquote indestructible, supposedly survives anything, including the literal end times. Hey guys, remember, health is wealth. That's why I take these seven supplements right before my cheese stuffed hot dogs. Officials confirm outbound flights are suspended, except for government and priority class departures. My dog has diplomatic status. OMG, there's like <laughs> a nuke or something? Can we get five gifted subs for surviving the blast, maybe? Today I'm showing you how to infiltrate an executive class bunker using only social yeah, engineering and a bear. Your nukes are so manly. You're such a big boy. Go check out the link in bio, my king. <laughs> I told you so when I said they'd shut down the grid. Look at you scrambling like rats now. The fiat system is collapsing exactly as we predicted. I just bought a bunker with doggy coin and a handshake. You losers can keep your degrees. Remember, beautiful souls, even when the earth ends, we find our center. 
This is just the universe asking us to go deeper into our practice. The world's in flames, but I'm on track. I manifest. It's good to have music in the end of the world. Back. Day in the life, guys. Stories, even during the apocalypse, I'm staying grateful, staying blessed. Link in bio for my manifestation course that literally predicted all this. So yeah, which character would your favorite influencer be? Gotta give it to AI. It's pretty impressive how they captured all these different nuances, jokes about society. That government guy that was running and saying that his dog have a diplomatic status. I mean, I've met many of these stereotypes during my life and my career and AI managed to capture them perfectly. Now, the question that I'm wondering is how much free roam did AI have in making all of this? I mean, obviously someone wrote a lot of the things that he wants him to do, do this, do that, give us this vibe, make it this and that. But all these little nuances, all these little emotions and jokes and capturing the facial expressions with the joke and the way they're dressed and the color and the theme, whew, that's pretty, that's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. It used to be that you will need a full-time studio with so many editors and camera people and just, you know, renting a place and the decorations and the design, everything. It would be so costly and so cumbersome. And now you just do it from your home with a laptop and just some creative thinking. So that's, wow, brilliant. So anyway, guys, as you've seen, usually I do talk more about politics and special forces and, you know, things that are happening around the world, but it's not really my passion to talk about these things. I know a lot about them and I enjoy talking and explaining it, but I also enjoy talking about things that I'm passionate about, like fatherhood, parenting, psychology, AI, computer games, uh, movies, different things, adventures, travels, storytelling. So yeah, I know probably the algorithm is not going to like that, but I don't care. I I'm looking here for the long run. I'm looking at this channel as something that I enjoy doing and I want to do for a long time. So instead of looking at it as a hunter, which is just focusing on one niche and one group of people that I'm going to talk only about politics or special forces, I'm going to look at it more as a farmer. I'm going to be planting the seeds, different seeds for different seasons, and I'm going to be watering it patiently. And I'm going to be taking my time here. Hopefully it will grow in a way that this will be a diverse channel that can talk about many topics and not only politics, Middle East, special forces. I'm not trying to become the Israeli Druze Yusuf Haddad. That's not my intention. I want to be able to just have sometimes a break and just talk about something fun and funny and silly and maybe even concerning like the rise of AI and the way that it's destroying Hollywood and taking the film industry and many other industries and where is it going to take us. That's just... I enjoy more talking about these things. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And just like I said, you can be expecting sometimes more of these things just coming like a comical relief or a story time with Mansu or just something that is going to be different and not always talking about how Ahmed is trying to kill Moshe and how Mustafa is trying to kill John and how I'm trying to convince Ahmed and Mustafa that maybe they shouldn't try to kill Moshe and John just because they're Christian or Jews. Probably not what I want to talk about all the time. So this is for me is a relief and I'm just joining you to come and join it and maybe just laugh with me and also share ideas and philosophy and ponder about where is this taking us as humanity. I really enjoy seeing the comments and reading, especially if it's interesting, intelligent comments. Some of the comments I actually like because it's the same dude that has been sending the same thing for a long time and he's doing it for the algorithm and I just appreciate the guy. And usually my reply to him will be, my man, <laughs> my man, just because he is there. So some of you have been there for, with me from the beginning and I highly appreciate that. But also the new ones that came to the channel, I try to reply to all the comments out there the funny one, the silly one, the provocative one. I, by the way, I don't delete any comment. I don't do that. Sometimes I guess YouTube do its fact checking and will take down a comment. So you feel free to write it again or maybe rewrite it that it's not going to look like it's... I got my comments removed from my own channel several times where I came and tried to answer someone and said like, wow, I love this. That's a great idea. Let's do it. And then YouTube will tell me this looked like spam. Or oh, this looked like it was generated by a bot. And I'm like, no, I wrote it. So I'll write again and again and YouTube will remove literally my own comments, especially when we're doing live streams. So just to put it out there, I'm not taking out any comments. And I highly appreciate any comment, share, like, and, you know, try to give the time that I have to answer them and read them thoroughly. And sometimes when it's really interesting or tough questions, I take my time to study and research so I can give you a better answer. So yeah, anyway, stay safe, don't do anything stupid, and in general, just get prepared for the apocalypse. No joke. 
I'm not saying become a prepper, although there's nothing wrong in being a prepper, but don't let it consume your life, but don't sit idly and just, you know, wonder and just think that these things can never happen to us. Happen in Ukraine, out of nowhere basically kind of i'm talking like the scale of the war from one day they're sitting chasing a kite in in the beautiful fields of ukraine and the next day they're literally living in an apocalypse full of drones and tanks and i don't know what happened october 7 <sighs> happened in india happened almost anywhere around the world especially places that you let muslims go unchecked that's definitely there but not only muslims it happens in many many places around the world where they're just evil forces that will just one day jump over the fence and life will change. So to think about how would I react and how would I do in these times of dura situations of emergency, of apocalypse, medical emergencies, doesn't matter what, outbreaks, it's a good thing to have some kind of a plan B or at least some kind of understanding of this is happening. I already thought of the first few steps because usually it's the first two days that matter the most. When a tragic, huge apocalypse comes, the first hours and few days, if you look at October 7, people had to survive by their own there for about 12 to 24 hours. Some people literally on their own, surrounded by barbarian, radical Muslim savages that came to kill them. Same thing with many, many catastrophes. Usually the government won't be there to help you and the law enforcement will be overwhelmed and not able, capable to come and you will be on your own. And the basic stuff like water, communication, food, medical aid, weapons if needed, means of self-defense and etc. It's going to be on you. So yeah, anyway, I, I talk too much about this. It's just stuff that I always think about. So yeah, do that. Don't be that dude when you're watching a movie about the apocalypse and you see this car on the side of the road and there's a dead skeleton inside and the heroes come open the door, push him away, take his bottle of water and keep walking. You don't want to have this as your credit when the movie, the end of the world, God forbid, comes. You want to be the guy that is actually walking on the bridge with his family and taking them to shelter. Yeah. That's, that's all I have to say about that.